Merry Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Hey, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, today we, we're talking about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior. See, for a long time, I had such a hard time with the Christmas message and even like Christmas songs. Why? Because they talk about these two things, and that is joy and peace. And I'm like, really, from the bottom of my heart, I used to go like, God, are you joking? Like, do you, like, watch the news? Like, how are you going to make, like, this world a joyful world? Or how are you going to really bring peace to the world? It's like, I, I couldn't reconcile uh, real life with the Christmas story. And I, I, I almost, like, it almost got me, like, a little almost like mad. Like, it's like, really? Like, are you, aren't you watching the news? Do you, do you see what's happening in my family? God, did you see what my, my best friends did to me when they betrayed me? Like, a joy to the world. And, and so I had such a, such a hard time, you know, reconciling the, uh, the Christmas message uh, with real life. It almost seems like the two would not be possible to be together, to be reconciled. You know, the, the joy and peace promised by God and the, the reality of life. And so uh, I, I had a few misconceptions uh, when I was thinking about joy and peace and, and God's promises. Let me tell you about this first misconception I had was like when, when God was talking about peace and joy... I thought he was going to bring that to the world, meaning that he was going to make the world be more like, like Disneyland, like the happiest place on earth. And that didn't really match, really didn't match what I was experiencing in my, in my own life. But what Jesus was promising and the Christmas message brings to us, it's not that it's peace to the world, like I was saying, in a sense of like God's going to make the, the earth like Disney, but it's actually a peace and joy in our souls. And that's so, so different, family, because now it's possible to reconcile the two. See, I thought that the peace and the joy needed to come from the outside, and that peace and joy from the outside was going to affect my inside. But no, the promise of, of peace and joy that is found in the Savior Christ, it's actually a peace that begins on the inside. And now uh, it's possible to reconcile the imperfection of this world with peace and joy because now it is a peace that comes from within. It is a peace that that we can have even during hard and challenging times in our lives. I'm here to tell you, uh, even though I didn't understand the message of Christmas and, and I couldn't reconcile it with real life, now, uh, after I had my life-changing encounter with Jesus, uh, more than 20 years ago, I can tell that it is possible to have a life filled with peace and joy that comes from within, and that is found in a place that is in a relationship with the Lord through Christ Jesus. So it is very possible, and that's why John 14, 27, Jesus said the following words, My peace I give you, and it's not like the world gives. My kind of peace will be a different kind of peace. It's a, a peace that is in our souls. So uh, that was my, my first misconception that I had uh, about the whole Christmas story and, and real life. My second misconception was that uh, it was about Jesus. Really, it was about Jesus. I, I saw Jesus. So let, let's read together a little part of the Christmas story found in Matthew 1, uh, 21. It's the story of, of Mary, right? The angels appearing to Mary and and, and he says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, 
because he will save his people from their sins. And, and here, here I was like, man, completely not understanding this. He will save his people from their sins. I, I almost felt like, like, okay, now God wants to talk about my sins. Now God wants to talk about everything I've done wrong. God wants to, uh, God, don't you know that I already feel bad about my sins? You know, so I, I put a lot of emphasis on the sins. God, why do you, do you want to keep rehashing about my past mistakes and my sins? Is that what you, what you want to do? Here's how I, I was reading. The next slide re reveals how I was reading like this. Jesus will save his people from their sins. As if the focus was on everything I've done wrong and everything you've done wrong. And, and, and actually what God really means is, is the following. Same verse, but he will save his people from their sins. Are you, do you notice the difference? I was focusing on God wants to talk about all of my mistakes. God wants me to feel bad. Uh, church is a place that you go to feel bad and, and to hear again and again how imperfect you are. But then I realized, no, he wants to save us from our sins. He wants to save you and I. That's why John 3, 17 says the following. Pay attention to this. It's right after John 3, 16. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, through Jesus. He is the Savior, and he came to save. He came to help those who need help. That's our Lord Jesus, when I was preparing for this message, I, I thought about like a lifeguard. You know, a lifeguard or maybe a firefighter. When they, when they show up to the scene, when maybe the house is burning and the owner of the house is desperate, yeah, I forgot to turn off the fire and the pan blew up. And the, the firefighter and the lifeguard, they're, they're not there to point the finger. They're not there to make them feel guilty. Oh, you, you made that mistake. Uh, you're like, you did this and you did that. The point of the lifeguard and the firefighter is to show up to save. See, the lifeguard, maybe a tourist got, grabbed a boogie board and, and didn't know how to swim that well. And maybe a current came and started pushing and pulling. And now the lifeguard comes to save. You see, like, I saw Jesus for the longest time as the one that's ready to point the finger, ready to talk about everything that I've done wrong. And, and that's why uh, instead of, like, leaning in to my relationship with Jesus, that I actually, like, that distanced myself from Jesus a little, a little bit. Because I, I, I didn't want to rehash all of my mistakes and sins. But he came to save the world. He came to help imperfect people like you and like me. And that's why Christmas is such a good news. The Savior came to save. Here's what Romans 8.31 says, that God is for us and he is not against us. So now, here it begs the question now. So we established so far that Jesus came to save and to help people that need saving and people that need help. Now, what, what, what does this mean then that the Savior came to save us from our sins? I'm going to talk about the two sides of the same coin of this salvation from our sins. And the first one is that when we, when we mess up, what happens? We all know what happens. We feel guilty. And when we feel guilty, that doesn't feel good. Our consciousness is telling us, like, why did you do that? 
You see, so we did something that we know it was wrong. Now our consciousness is telling us that and we're feeling guilty. Jesus came to save us from our guilt. Because he came to save us from our sins. And our sins cause us to feel guilty. And he came to save us from that guilt. How does he do that? He does that by forgiving imperfect people like you and I. You see, when we come to Christ Jesus and we really come to him, you see, the message of Christmas is come to God through Christ Jesus. Because God wants to save and he sent us a savior. And when we do that, when we come to God, because we realize we need help and we need saving. We have too much guilt in our consciousness and we need his forgiveness. When we, we do that, here's what the Bible says in, in Psalm 103.12. It says that he's going to grab our sins and he's going to forgive us so good. He's going to throw away our sins so far that it says that it's as far as the east is from the west. So far has he removed our sins from us. And also in Hebrews, uh, the next slide, it says, For I will forgive them, and I will remember their sins no more. God is not there pointing the finger, oh, you're a bad human being, I can't believe you did this, did this or did that, because all of us have done things that we're not proud of. And all of us, can struggle with guilt from those things that we did. He's like, son and daughter, I want to save you. I want to forgive you. And my forgiveness is going to be so good that I will remember it no more. Meaning God will never use that against us. And God is going to forgive us so, so good. So I'm here to tell you the message of Christmas is that the Lord God forgives you in Christ Jesus. He did not come to condemn you. He came to save you. And his forgiveness was displayed on the cross. On the cross, he is dying and paying for our guilt. Now, the, the other side of the saint, the, this coin of he wants to save us from our sins. So we talked about our past guilt, our past mistakes, and our consciousness being heaven. And so many human beings are living life in guilt. And God wants to save us from that through forgiveness. Now, the other side, he wants to save us from our sins, is that uh, sometimes we have desires to do things that are wrong. And that's called being a human being. We have these, these desires. We, and, and I'll give you an example. Uh, before I, I had my life-changing encounter with Jesus, I, I used to, um, you know, I used to use drugs. And, and I really wanted to stop using drugs. I, I knew that that wasn't helping me in school. That wasn't helping me at my work. I really wanted to help. But I couldn't find strength to stop it. Another example of mine is before uh, I came to Jesus. Uh, I used to do all kinds of wrong things, you know, at work and, and cheat on my taxes, anything to get ahead, really. I would cross the line of wrong, right and wrong all the time. And, 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 and so, see, I knew those things were bad. I knew those things were wrong. Everybody knows it. Everybody in the whole world knows it. A five-year-old knows when they're doing something wrong. Even dogs know when they do something wrong. Have you watched those videos? And the, the, anyways, you know what I'm talking about. So everybody knows when they're doing wrong, but where do you find the strength to stop it? And that's another aspect of his salvation, is that he is the one that can give us strength when we don't have any strength on ourselves. That we can come to God and say, God, there's this thing in my life that I know it's wrong. I need your help. I need saving on this. And when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
and we're honest and vulnerable with him. And we come in humility and ask him for his help. He's there to help because remember, he is the savior. He wants to save. And, uh, and that's why he brought us Jesus. There's so much strength in the power of the Holy Spirit family. So much wisdom, so much strength, so much that, that, that we need to tap. And we tap those things in a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. So is there anything in your life that you want to find victory in? Just bring that to Jesus. I'm not going to promise you that's going to be overnight, that overnight he's going to go like, you know, poof, it's gone. Sometimes it happens. God can really change our taste for things that we used to like, and he, he can help us not like certain things overnight. Yeah. But a lot of the things is going to be a process. But he wants to save imperfect people like you and I from anything that we want saving, but we see ourselves not finding strength on our own human strength. So would you come to Jesus? He wants to forgive you of our past mistakes and sins that causes guilt. And he wants to help you on the day-to-day -day life when we have temptations and desires to do something that is wrong, but we don't want to do that. Why? Because then guilt is going to come again. And so that's when we come to Jesus and ask him for help. Now, the last thing about this thing called forgiveness that is so powerful is the following. Jesus also came to save us from the fear of death. Because this is a very real thing, right? What are people terrified of? Death, public speaking, and things like that. So most people are terrified by that, and we don't have to live like that. You know, like there's always this question like, have I done enough? Am I, am I good enough for God? We almost think, see, I, I put a slide here together. I, I used to think this way uh, for a long time. We sometimes think life is a scale between good and bad. And if I've done more good than bad, hopefully, let's hope that God allows me to go to heaven. But this has no peace. This has no joy. Why? Because we never know when enough is enough. We never know if we've done it enough. There's always that, that question. What if I tell you, that we've been asking the wrong question. If we're asking this question, have I done enough? Am I enough? What if I told you that that is the wrong a uh, question to ask? That the, cor the correct uh, question to ask is the following. And that's the only question we should be asking ourselves. So we don't have the fear of dying anymore. The question is, have I been forgiven? Have I been forgiven? Because every human being needs forgiveness. And none of us are perfect. So it's not a competition between good and evil. Let's cross our fingers and hope that we make it to heaven. If we just come to the Lord Jesus and accept his forgiveness. And the Bible says that when we do that, when we are forgiven, that is enough. Because Christ is enough and the cross is enough for anyone to be forgiven and receive the forgiveness of their sins and have the assurance that that's enough to come into heaven. That's why Jesus said the following, John eleven twenty five. 25, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, he, see the promise, will live even after dying. See, one of, a huge misconception that people have is that they, pe they think that good people go to heaven. And that's not true. I know it's shocking. It's actually forgiven people go to heaven. And I'm here to tell you that peace and joy is possible. Even in the midst of ups and downs of life, it is possible. Where? In a relationship with Christ Jesus. 
Because in his forgiveness, there's so much goodness. See, let me show you why Christ Jesus is the best gift that anyone can receive, not just during Christmas, but any day of their lives. Because in Christ Jesus, we find forgiveness. And in forgiveness, that, that helps us with our guilt. And now we see how peace and joy start being possible because now I know I messed up a million times, but God forgave me in the Lord Jesus. Christ is the best gift that anyone can open because in him we can really find peace and joy. Joy to the world. Remember? Because now, again, it is a peace that it's in our souls. That there's going to be uh, political things, job things, family things, health situations. Yeah, that's part of life. But it's possible to have joy and peace in our souls. And uh, Jesus is the best gift because in Jesus we find strength. Strength to say no to things that we need to say no to that. And to say yes to the things we, we know that we have to say yes to. It's the strength of God. It's coming to God and say, God, would you help me? I need your strength. I'm being tempted right now to do something wrong. I need your help, God. And in Christ Jesus, we find life. Because now when you're living life with peace and joy in your soul, I call it life during life. But Jesus also promised life after life. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone that comes to me, even after they die, they will live again. So that's the message, family. Jesus is the reason for the season. He's the Savior. And he came to save people like you and me. And that is the gospel. That is the good news. Christ, the Savior, is born. So let's pray, family. Let's pray together and, and thank God that he uh, loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us and forgive us and adopt us, to remove our guilt and give us life, give us peace and give us joy. And even after we die, we know that we live again. So let's pray. God, Thank you so much for coming to the world and sending his son, God. We praise you. We thank you. Christmas, it's amazing. The amazing story that the son of God leaves heaven to die, to save, and to help imperfect human beings like me. Thank you, God. Thank you for sacrificing so much for my benefit. And for going to the cross for my benefit. Thank you so much, God. We love you. We praise you. We celebrate you. Merry Christmas, God. We love you. We love you. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.